All right. Hey, gang, we got a great guest today. Lauren Wiseman is here. We're going to talk in just a few minutes about the music industry, his life as a drummer behind the scenes, and also get into brand messaging. Is your messaging on video helping people or is it actually holding you back and keeping you from attracting an audience, attracting long term customers and how are you messaging? It's uh, our second season of StreamYard Connect. We're going to YouTube Live for the first time on the StreamYard YouTube channel. Let's start the show. Hey gang, welcome to StreamYard Connect. I'm Ross Brand. We're here every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern, and we're excited to welcome everybody watching on YouTube. I can see comments coming in already. It's so nice to have everybody with us over on YouTube, and we're also going live on the StreamYard Facebook page, the StreamYard YouTube channel, and on the iRoss Brand Twitter feed. So, uh, if you want to watch us on Periscope or Twitter, you can do that as well. And this is the start of our second year of StreamYard Connect. I'm, I'm so glad to have everybody with us as we continue into now. This is the start of our fourth season, our 39th episode. And I don't usually mention episode or season or any of that stuff, but I'm, I'm just thrilled at the response to the show and by the fact that StreamYard wants to keep going with it and even add YouTube as a destination. So uh, I want to say hi to uh, Beauty Bubble and Shadow the Hedgehog, Michael Daniels, WWE and Furby and so many people. I might not get to everybody on YouTube, but it's great to see you. Coach Jenny is here Juan is here, uh, Marion LaSalle over on YouTube, good to see you, had a great time on her show uh, a couple times in the past few months, uh, Ivan Louie and Johnny and KNKJ Channel 55, North Brunswick, San Mateo, thank you everybody for joining us, this is StreamYard Connect and we're here every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern, and if you're new to StreamYard, uh, you should know that it's a live streaming app. That makes it easy to go live, so easy. The three pillars of StreamYard, you can see the founders on the left, Gage Van and Top, and on the right, Dan Briggs. Ease of use, stability, and professional-looking streams. Anything that I'm doing with this broadcast today, you can learn to do as well, StreamYard provides a lot of tools and makes it, again, so easy to go live and have a good-looking broadcast. You can go to Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Periscope, which gets you on Twitter. You can go to your Twitch channel, and if you want to go to another destination, for example, I go to Amazon Live, you can use custom RTMP. It's just basically getting a stream key and an RTMP URL. And you plug that into StreamYard and you can go live with many of the same features that you would use for the platforms with built-in integration. I also want to give a big thanks to Jesse Guthrie. He's from StreamSenseMedia.com. Jesse is good enough to have the designed the new background for us and he's going to be contributing some branding elements and some visuals along the way as we continue to evolve the look and feel of the show. So it's good to have Jesse on board and helping with that. He's got a brand new website up that is beautiful. You can check it out at streamsensemedia.com, streamsensemedia.com. 
StreamYardShow.com. Let's get to what's new about StreamYard because there were a couple of announcements at the town hall this weekend. One that's been asked for by a lot of users, and that is the ability to resize boxes. For example, as the main host, you can be in the big box and next to you in the layout in a very small box can be the guest. A lot of people wanted to be able to put the guest into the large size. In fact, you can use this with up to 10 people on screen. And uh, CEO Gage Van Den Top made the announcement on Sunday night. Our first uh, feature announcement, announcement, which is the ability to uh, change guest uh, placements. Sometimes people call it bigger, bigger boxes, how people uh, usually phrase it. Yeah, so that was the announcement. And then uh, Gage and Dan did a little demo. Hey everyone, I just wanted to quickly demo a feature coming soon that was highly requested. So you can now go ahead and rearrange guests. I know this is the most popular layout for doing that. So as you can see, you can hover over the video tiles and drag and drop them into a new place. And then you can see Dan is now in the larger uh, position. This is great if you want to highlight a particular guest who maybe is working on something and should be taking up a bigger part of the screen. And of course it works in all layouts. So again, we can switch to a layout like this. And again, I can take on the, uh, the other position there. So there it is. That's how you can adjust the layouts if you want to make one size, uh, one one participant bigger than the other, or if you want to switch the host and the guest positions uh, using a variety of different layups. Up to 10 people on screen in the pro plan, you can do that. Uh, also, they announced that, remember when you would go and play a video clip and that muted mic, your mic is muted message, would lay over the middle of the video so that you or your guests sometimes were blocked from seeing part of the video. Well, they've made a change there, and uh, co-founder Dan Briggs explained it on Sunday night. Yeah, so this is just a small change. Basically, I know some people, we've always had like a mic muted message just to make sure you don't go live with your mic accidentally muted. Uh, but it was like kind of in the way for some people, especially for overlays, for video overlays. So we've just kind of moved it up out of the way and made it a little more just... It's still useful in that it'll, if you forget and you go live with your mic on or with your mic off, sorry, it'll still remind you and like it'll, it'll show up when you start talking, but most of the time it kind of just gets out of the way. So it doesn't block your overlay videos or anything anymore. It's just a nice, nice subtle change, especially for your guests. Yeah. So that's a, that's a couple of good updates there from StreamYard. Also an exciting show this past Thursday night hosted by, Dana Bentz and Kelsey Bentz, and they talked with a couple of guests from England who are actually doing live theater using StreamYard and found out why they chose StreamYard and kind of how they go about doing what they do. We wanted yeah. to provide new something new um, and provide a platform for people to, to act, to, to write, to direct um, in this time and show that we can still continue to create art. Um, and so we kind of were looking for a platform that would allow us to do that. Um, but I guess without causing us much of a headache, <laughs> um, really, I mean, I think we were looking for something that was very user friendly um, and something that would allow us to interact with people, um, something that we could build from as well. So our first show is quite different to actually the show right now where we've added a lot of polish and the platform has allowed us to do that. So we were looking for a platform that we could evolve with as a company, as we are figuring out, well, how do we bring theater to people online uh, yeah. in isolation, in lockdown? I'm yeah. directing actually from my bedroom. That's Jonathan Woodhouse of Encompass Productions. And you can catch Dana and Kelsey every Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on the StreamYard Facebook page. Um, and if you'd like to be a guest on a StreamYard show, Dana and Kelsey are interviewing StreamYard users about how they're using the platform. You can reach out to Dana at contact at StreamYard.com. We've got many more videos to play in the remix, but let's get to some industry news going on right now. And uh, what a better time to see this story pop up last night than when we have a guest coming up, Lauren Wiseman, in just a couple minutes from the music business, who I'm sure has his own opinions on live streaming and music. Uh, there was an article in which uh, the author at Music Business Worldwide, um, don't remember the author's name, Murray Stassen, I think it was. Anyway, uh, Murray Stassen had 
basically three reasons why he thinks Spotify is going to get into or should get into live music. And the main point of the article was that live music on live streaming platforms has just taken off during this time of social distancing and quarantining and not being able to go to live events. And not only has it taken off, but live streaming of of music has basically become big business. He cites, and as an example, Melissa Etheridge has a subscription live streaming service, and she's pulling in $50,000 a month from that service. And he said that while Spotify is going in big on podcasts to add to its recorded music, that going into live events and live music could possibly give them a leg up on competition and another paid tier. And so that's something something to look for. I don't know if it's going to happen or it's not going to happen, but we'll continue to follow as Spotify remains very busy making news with podcasting and video and and this live streaming at least as the author described that would include video on spotify we know spotify's added some video podcasts but not a lot of them but maybe more will be coming as well to spotify reddit uh i know it's the one year anniversary or was the one year anniversary last week of reddit getting into live streaming because we did that story on our first show last year and reddit's looking to perhaps grow its live streaming it's a it's sort of a small small output at this point but it's uh popular among uh, those that use it and it, apparently they're making some noise about expanding its availability it's available right now i think in 12 subreddits but perhaps they're looking to expand it into more subreddits it's a small service as i mentioned but perhaps that's coming and uh, the author at The Verge, uh, Jesse Peters said that for him, he finds that watching live streams on Reddit are a lot more relaxed than what you see on live streams on YouTube and on Twitch. That was his opinion. Um, right now, RPAN, which stands for Reddit Public, Sur- Public Access Network, Reddit Public Access Network, streams 24 hours a day. There's a 45-minute limit per show. And it's uh, a lot of streams coming from phones. So the, the And the audio and video quality is not what you'd typically find for a live stream on YouTube or a live stream on Facebook. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, people seem to be enjoying it. It's bringing more people into live streaming. I think maybe they feel more able to just share quiet moments or, you know, their passions and hobbies there because it's a more closed environment perhaps than is twitch youtube facebook we'll see what happens with that um also could you imagine irl live streaming for one year straight with no breaks not even a break when you go to the bathroom well michael jerry says he's the first person to live stream his entire life with no breaks for an entire year 365 days in high resolution. And he said he was in a dark place when he started doing it, and he actually was contemplating suicide. And through the connections he made, through his interest in live streaming, apparently he emerged, uh, you know, feeling much more connected to people, much more optimistic about his future. And so he saw a positive outcome from that. Uh, He live-streamed on YouTube and Twitch, but because their rules and he had some not-safe-for-work content, he also had a separate camera that continued to stream even when he wasn't live on YouTube and Twitch on a platform called Robot Stream. Robot Streamers, I believe it's called. Anyway, uh, I could not imagine doing that. And even if I was cutting out private moments and keeping it clean, I still couldn't imagine having a camera on myself that long. But hey, if anybody wants to try it, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, he was actually inspired, Michael Jerry, by an article on BuzzFeed about how live streaming constantly for one week 
ruin my life. So I guess he showed you could live stream every day, all day for a year, and it could have a positive benefit. This is StreamYard Connect. I'm Ross Brand. We're going to bring on Lauren Wiseman in just a minute. I want to thank everybody again for joining us over on YouTube Live. It's our first show on YouTube Live. I see Dean Reynolds in the chat, Johnny Bean. Thank you so much. Thanks to everybody on Facebook and Twitter as well. Beth Granger watching over on Facebook. Our friend A.V. Trainer is over there. Jesse Guthrie, great to see you. Patricia A. Murray, and thanks everybody so much. Let's bring on our guest. I'm so excited to have this guy on as our first guest for our second year of the show. Lauren Wiseman is a brand messaging strategist. He works with FSG Messaging and Optics. He's also a music industry pro. He's been a drummer on more than 700 albums across major and independent record labels. He then went into TV production and somewhere along the line got into this whole online thing. He does keynote speaking. He makes TV appearances as a guest. He's also the author of a couple books, The Artist's Guide to Success in the Music Business and Music Business for Dummies, and the host of the Wait What Really Okay podcast, where I thought the song was so annoying the first time I heard it, and now I can't get it out of my head the entire day every time I think about having Lauren on or promoting his podcast as part of him coming on the show, although he didn't <laughs> ask me to promote anything. I'm hearing that song 24-7 in my head. This guy knows something about messaging and capturing attention. Lauren, welcome to StreamYard Connect. It's great to have you on the show. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. I apologize for the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I mean, it's it's kind of magical. I mean, it, it totally it totally I was totally turned off by it the first time. I was like, what is this silliness? Right. And then <laughs> I can't get it out of my head. And I look forward to it when I listen to your podcast, which is, I guess, the purpose of picking a certain kind of jingle and a certain kind of sound and words. And I mean, messaging is your thing. Was this in an, in, in, a very intentional decision? Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a fun crossover from what I was doing in music to TV to messaging. Now I hired RKVC, uh, the uh, the duo out of Los Angeles, to write it. And I said, as a music producer, I want you guys to go to the just the the cheesiest, most memorable pop stops. We're going to do seven seconds in. We're going to do this. And it, and one of the things I wanted to teach other musicians in the theme song was you can license music you can get paid royalties for licensed music so it's right. titled the fully licensed theme song and the 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 thing that i've hit now is my my daughter is four and a half and she started <laughs> singing the song my wife hates it she can't stay like when i'm recording <laughs> I, I hear i hear my office door close a little harder <laughs> right right <laughs> Well, I think it's going to be around for quite a while. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the the other thing that I, that stands out that's, that I think you do a few things you do differently. And then we'll get into a little bit of your, your music background and some stories that you can share from your days there. And then talk about messaging. Lauren's also going to give away a one hour messaging audit to uh, somebody watching live. So stay tuned for that. Your website is different than most people in media and marketing and messaging in that you just have all these resources listed in your footer, resources for you if somebody's having you on a show or they want to contact you or they want you to speak, and then resources that other people can use, whether it's to find your content elsewhere or it's just to sort of know best practices or how things work. What what was behind that decision when so many people take the approach that like, oh, don't confuse people, not too many options, get them to go where you want them to go. And yours is like, let's put everything out there and be the resource. At least that's how I took it. How did you go in developing that website? I, I believe when it comes to websites, it's subjective and objective. 
and that there is not necessarily a correct way. And a lot of times when someone says, this is the perfect website, they're basing it off of the metrics that work for them. For me, for what I wanted for the website, I was moving, this website was transitioning me out of the music industry as a drummer and producer, more into the consulting, the speaking, the, uh, you know, the traveling in that sense. I wanted to make sure everything was just easily accessible. The top of the website, it's only blogs. It's blogs and information. The bottom, right. all the liability documents, all my booking documents, my travel documents, any link that you need. It's not made for everyone and it's not pretty, but it's been a very effective tool. And certain people say, I need to do a site like that. Well, if you're a 19 year old female and you're putting out this kind of product, this isn't going to work for you. And that, I mean, circle that around and make it a short story. It really is designing a website and the brand image presence that works for the individual, not for this is just really amazing and the best for everyone. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> it's definitely different than what you see. And again, much like the theme song, I didn't get it the first time I visited. <laughs> But as I went back, I started to understand kind of what you were doing, why you would be doing that, and how that it is useful as a resource. Because we, we often think, you know, we want our website to either convert somebody or to look beautiful, but we don't really think of what are people coming to the website for, that they might come back one day and go, this is, I'm going to include this on my resources because... You know, I might need a speaker agreement. I might need to know, uh, you know, a guest release or, you know, what do I do when I have somebody on video? Do I have to get them to sign? Like you've thought through all these different different areas and we're still kind of in the wild, wild west with live streaming and podcasting as there isn't really an industry that's telling us, OK, these are best practices or this is what you should do. Um, I know coming from radio, we didn't do anything other than get a guest to the phone so we could get them on, right? <laughs> Whether we booked them three years in advance or I caught them on the fly in their hotel room and like, hey, can you come on for 10 minutes to talk about scoring the game winning touchdown or whatever? It's just you get them if you can get them. It's a phone. It goes off into the ether. And that's that's the show. Um, talk, talk a little bit about compliance, which is part of your message. And I think it just isn't talked about that much unless you're doing a panel at a big event with a bunch of lawyers and you know that kind of thing <laughs> that's more industry focused. Talk about it for creators. Absolutely. And, and leading into that, about the resources on, on my website, mm -hmm. to anybody watching, take them. If you need one of those things, take it, copy it out, take out my name and my information. But if you need those, it's not necessarily hiring people. These are common documents. Go for them. As far as compliance, compliance has become a new issue right now. It doesn't matter if you're a live streamer. It doesn't matter if social media. You know, just like you say, live streaming is the Wild West. Social media and websites still are as well. They've been around a little bit longer. But now we're seeing the ambulance chasing lawyers. They used to go, they, they chased after an accident. Right. They're now going home online and they're chasing after privacy protection, child online security and everything else. They're looking for that email to come through to, from you, a spam email that has your name that might have porn, that might have something a uh, silly that doesn't allow them to subscribe. And then they're going to turn it around into a lawsuit. I, on the left side of my website, there are a series of compliance formats. It's not just having a terms of conditions and a privacy policy. It's mm -hmm. the updated privacy policy. Everybody here. Now, I'll share things when it's subjective, it's opinion. When it's objective, it's fact. Objectively, it is a fact. The Child Online Privacy Protection Act is now law, and it's not just California. Add that into all of your privacy policies. The same thing with, with the spam. That limitation of liability for all live streamers, for all podcasters, for all you know video people, blog people, everywhere else, by stating, you might get an email from me that I didn't send to you. I am not liable. You can contact me. I will deal with this. If that isn't there, then under what's going on right now with ICANN and the Internet Act and the Wild West that the Internet still is, you position yourself for liability. So the more that you can move out of liability, move into compliance, protecting yourself. I mean, the same thing with live streaming. You want to be careful what music is in the background. Right, right. Is that correct? All, you know, you hear the people, YouTube, they took all this down. 
When we take that one step back and strategically think about what are we doing, what can we do, what do we have to get permission to do, we can do what we love for right. longer, for more, and not be attacked. Oh, Sorry, so long answer. <laughs> no, it's a, it's a great message, and I appreciate it. And I, I appreciate everybody in the chat. Um, I will do my best to get you to your comments during the show and your questions. If not, I will revisit them after the show and come back into the chat and answer any questions you have about StreamYard or gear or anything else related to live streaming. Um, also, I'm playing around here just real quick to show you this drag and drop little method that you can switch layout without. Um, you really don't need to do anything else in order to get your guest into the bigger slot. Let's focus on our, our guest because he's fantastic. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're a charismatic guy. You're a front of the room speaker when I've seen you. How did you become this sort of ghost drummer in the music business, this behind-the-scenes session guy who is obviously extremely talented, could have been in a band? How, how does somebody become, okay, I'm going to work behind the scenes in this, and I'm going to fill in for some big-name people, which you probably can't tell me. But give us an idea what your life was like in, in the music business. Well, I, I appreciate the compliments, but I mean, look at this mug. It's not the prettiest. <laughs> and that was the shift. I had somebody from a certain record label company. I was working on a project with a band and he said, look, you're tall, you're hairy and you're scary. You're <laughs> never going to be a rock star, but. I think you have the, the discipline. I could get you to play with all the rock stars. He was the guy that told me it wasn't always Ringo, uh, the Ringo star for those unfamiliar on the Beatles albums. And he began to explain this whole behind the scenes thing. And he goes, it's total humility. But right now you're saying you want more than anything to be a drummer. It's not about who you're drumming with. This is an avenue and a pathway for you. And I was really interested in it. I played with a couple bands, 18, 19, I dropped out of Berkeley College of Music to go on the road. I had a professor who was like, get out of here. If you're even talking about a tour, go. <laughs> and then as I realized just the, the volatility and the crazy of what was going on, there was a humility. It wasn't self-deprecation. It's like, okay, I'm not going to fit the mold for this. And I would go out. I mean, I had purple hair up to here. I had long hair down here. I had the mullet. I even had a perm. None of these are good looks. And fortunately, it was before Instagram. None of these are online anymore. <laughs> when... I, I learned about the strategic element of signing NDAs and, and uh, the confidentiality agreements and going in. I mean, to me, Ross, it was like Magnum PI. I always wanted to be a detective mm -hmm. and, it, you know, and have that mustache and all that going in and finding out, OK, why was this guy fired or why is this guy not here? What's the problem? It wasn't just go in and play what you want. It's a humble place of going, how can I add to this song to get it to where it needs to go? Okay, they're not firing the drummer. He's just not good enough yet. So I have to play a part that would fit what he was doing and then make sure that it was something he would be able to do later on. There are a lot of drummers, and there were so many drummers that were so much better than me. I used to do these drum clinics. People would come up, I don't understand why you have so many albums. I'm so much better than you. I said, you probably absolutely are. But it is, it's in the humility, the resonance, and the musicality that many people can work in music. When you mm -hmm. offer something, you're needed. I don't have, I, don't, I, I did practice eight hours a day and I did all that stuff, but more so, I spent more time listening and it was identifying. And then that became a niche. And then it was the first album I did and I didn't say a word. And I was out at this party and we were all loaded. And a couple of people kind of grilled me. They're like, what are you working on? I was just in the studio. I, I, Next day, I got six albums. It was, okay, not only can he keep his mouth shut, he can keep his mouth shut when he's drunk. He's now an asset. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so as a session musician or a ghost drummer, how, how often are you listed on an album and how often are you sort of covering for somebody who is sick, unable to play, in rehab, you know, about to be fired, but the deal still has them being on the album cover like how 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 does this all come to be and and how do you uh either do get credit or don't get credit depending on the the situation the credit is more of a silent credit the deal <laughs> the way that it worked was it uh, it wasn't fame by any means and you can go to all music and it's very hard to find me but it was the music producers it was the studios it was the record label the investment team that realized, okay, as soon as I create, I looked at the music business from the creativity side, but I also looked at it from the business side. 
and being able to see how can I be an asset to the people that would need me the most and pay. And that made it also that much more fun. I've had friends that are in incredibly successful bands that play the so same songs for 20, 30 years. I wouldn't want that. I loved going in having no idea what was going on. When you ran into the certain musicians' unions, it had to be that name. If somebody was sick and they needed the credit across so they could fully be paid, they were going to get their payment, but there were stipends and additional supplemental you know, revenue costs that could cover people like me. So it was as behind the scenes as it was, and I got a couple endorsements. It was, uh, you know, I got my drumsticks and my cymbals and some of my drums and whatnot. But it was always, who is this guy? I did it. I did a trio with Mike. I did a trio project with Mike McCready from Pearl Jam, Duff McKagan from Guns N' Roses <laughs> in Seattle. And we did this thing and they're kind of going down the line and everybody knows Duff. Guns N' Roses, everyone knows Mike. Right. Pearl Jam, and they go to me, and then it's like, why is he here? This one kid asks, and Duff goes, he goes, I don't even know, maybe he played on some of the gun stuff, <laughs> because he's playing on more <laughs> stuff than the two of us come on, and I've never played on the gun stuff, but right. it was just, it's this cool, it's almost not nine to five, but it, it, it's almost like this realistic career in music, and in doing that, I got to, it wasn't the hundreds of albums, it was hundreds of egos, budgets, successes, failures, options, business plans. It was more of a learning experience of people than anything else. I love it. I'd never go back, but I love, I love it. <laughs> uh, you know, without prying too deeply, can somebody earn a living where they can keep a roof on their head and have food to eat or even live fairly well as a session ghost musician? Ghost musicians are, are for that matter, dead. I mean, it really has come to a point where when it used to be so much about hiding, you now see, and a lot of the confidentiality agreements are up. We know it was Abe Laboreal Jr. playing on the Hanson stuff now. We know certain stuff. I've seen some stuff online that's starting to leak about things that I played on. It, to be a session musician today, yes, it is, it is, obtainable. It, it is obtainable, but also for the session players today, you should think about or consider having all the quality for the home studio and the ability to record from wherever you are. This is cat named Ash Sohn. He's this drummer in, in, uh, in, in Europe. Dude has built out this beautiful, he's, he's done stuff for Adele. He was on the American Idol as the house drummer over there or voice. But this cat, you can call him, he can set up, he can get those tracks to you, he can make it happen. He doesn't have to leave his house. So not just, it's no longer traveling. I never had that. And then it's years back, but to have the gear to be able to record at the highest quality and then at the same time, the humility to price effectively for the times that we're in, you can make a career. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, how did drum machines impact you? Because obviously now you can program <laughs> so well that, you know, I, I, I could you actually you could actually, at least for some kinds of music, you can really program out the drummer if they're not showing up for the session right yeah absolutely i mean i i got into this thing i hated drum machines when i was around 20 21 right. i was anti-electronics and it showed in the work that was coming when i started seeing when i started seeing drum machines more as percussion and as a embellishing and supplemental instrument and then i would go to people say oh i want to put drum machine on this and i have this loop and i'm happy i would come in and say let me just try to lay a real live hi-hat or let me put a live kick drum, bass drum on this. Or let's fill in these, these actual fills. You still get what you want, but see what it feels like to have this real thing. And again, it was, it was intention to perception. I never attacked. I never told them what they were supposed to do, what was right. good. What, what All of music is subjective. And when you approach things not saying, this is the best drama, this is the best production, but more so, I would do this and here's why. And would you consider it? That opened doors. We're talking with Lauren Weissman. He's a brand messaging strategist. We're going to pivot now and talk a little bit about messaging. I heard uh, Lauren speak at a few different events and most recently at the PodFest Global Expo, uh, both in, a, in his regular talk and in a meetup. And you have a unique approach to what's going on online and how people are often making the mistake of following the wrong examples when they're trying to build an audience, trying to make money online. They're going about it either following kind of false gurus or following what worked for somebody else but has no relation 
to their story. They're just, it's plug and play formula from maybe a course they took or something. I, I don't want to put your whole answer out there, but it's, it's <laughs> fascinating. Talk about it. Uh, Cause you presented it in a way I've not heard before. Uh, talk about, you know, what is really going wrong with messaging and, and, and what do you do to fix messaging so that somebody can start to relate more, uh, authentically with a more clear connection to their audience? I think in the simplest terms, when we think and move in love and not fear, when we think and move with authenticity and truth, and then when we have the humility to say, this is our opinion against this is a fact, we can shift things. So many people are out there right now putting so much out that is false. And, and it's not that it necessarily didn't work for anyone, but they might only give 25% of the story. You have the individuals, the, the Tony Robbins, the Gary V's, the Maxwell programs, the, 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 uh, the, the 10Xing, where all you have to do is X. This is what you need to do. Don't tell me what I need to do. And if you're going to tell me what I need to do, share the full story. I tell everybody, I say, it's like, okay, you get into your car. You put half a tank of gas in. This person then explains what the destination looks like, but they don't share the roads on how they got there. Right. Different examples. I don't fault Gary Vee. I don't, I, from my opinion, I don't like what he puts out, but he leaves out parts of his story, the advantage, po the vantage points, advantage points, and what he had in place that allowed him to do what he does. Right now, for all of us inside of messaging, it, to detoxify it, to come with opinion as opposed to fact, to be able to respond to something negative by diluting that or calming it. It's not losing our point. It's not changing our position. It's reinforcing our authority by not getting angry, by staying in a state of love, not fear, and by acting with honor. I, was, I, I did that video yesterday. I cannot stand the download the book Download the certification, download the format here, download the blogs. All you have to do is put 10% to fix your stories, a cover on this, and put it out as yours. To me, anything that you're doing online, anything you're putting out online, would you share your marketing plan with the audience that you're trying to attract? And then the last part, I guess it's not a short answer, it's simple. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> answer. The, the, the last part is the percept engagement of the three audiences. We oftentimes are so focused on the people that love us and, and at the same time, the people that have no idea who we are. We sometimes miss those people that are on the edge. Let's be supermarket marketers and not super or mastermind or any of this, right. but this idea that someone may need to see us, hear us, come across us, see a series of different things about us before they decide to engage. And if we're so focused on fame, this many views, this many likes. When we tell people, don't forget to subscribe before we've shared about ourselves, we lose our connection. We lose our honor. If we can flip inside of our messaging to authenticity in the word of its true meaning, authority in what you have, not trying to be the authority like other people, not calling yourself a guru, an expert, a mastermind, or all of that, but just in the honor of who you are, your experience, whether you're 18, 68, or anywhere in between, you've shared things, learned things, experienced things that can make you an authority in a different journey. And if you, if you work down that path with your authority, it's true. When you try to pretend to be something you're not, it's a lie. Right, right. Now, people are probably thinking, okay, how are people doing this wrong? Like basic examples in their everyday video content or social posts, what do you see that makes you cringe or withdraw? And what do you see when they use wording that you go, ah, that's what I like to see. That person's coming from a good place. I like, inv I like being invited. I don't like being told what to do. I know I've got kind of an alpha, the more dominant personality. I can be open to other dominant personalities, but when it's aggressive dominance, then it's negative. You, you like, share, follow, do this, do that. Don't forget to. When I'm feeling that force, I'm getting that from car ads. I'm getting that from this. I'm not enough here. I'm, I'm missing out there. I mean, a can't miss episode. The best thing that you've ever heard. Stop. 
share. I mean, I mean, even even when we go to TripAdvisor or, or Yelp, you can create your authority on those two sites. I did a book tour where I was on TripAdvisor more than I was on Facebook, sharing my views on the restaurants, the hotels, the places we stayed. And it wasn't best burger ever. <laughs> How many places have you been? This is what I liked about the burger. This is why I liked it. When right. with musicians, I'm playing here tonight. Okay, less than 1% of your audience may be in that area. What about that club? Step mm -hmm. to the perception of the audience and in creating an invitation for someone to scroll down. Take the average Twitter. If I see your Twitter for the first time, am I going to get you? Is it going to be too far off? The, is, is it going to be too, too far off? Are you trying to attract so many different people with so many different messages and none of them really lead people to your own? Those are all, those are some key massive, but, and also the other ones, unique, different, innovative, never been done before. Kill those from your vocabulary. Even if you are unique, innovative, doing something that's never been done before, all of that, use the other words that the people aren't using. Find the words to describe what you feel. Don't tell people, you will love my book. I hope you connect with these parts in my book. That, that My intention was to do this. It's not being soft. It's not being passive. It's inviting and engaging. What do you see the difference in the audience reaction when you see one and you see the other? Because I'm sure you've seen it. Clients coming to you and telling you the difference over time. You probably see it in some of your own uh, messaging as you become more and and get deeper involved in this area what, what what are what are the telltale signs that you're you're going in the right direction when you change your messaging when you start to see the opportunities of not just the numbers but true engagement when you see people that want to share and review because they want to review and not told that they want to, when media begins to pick up earned media that's free mm -hmm. it's it's going to a patient's place of not trying to get the entire world on the same time, not trying to funnel down to the exact people you think that want right, you. Right, right. But realizing, and this is where I disagree with some of the biggest marketers. So and so, Betty, 58 years old in Omaha, might have six major people that want to be clients that want to buy your stuff. And if you engage with her the right way, as opposed to pushing her to the side because she's not your audience, she may give you the audience or the clients. When we are that much open, also the other thing is when the selling goes down or the call to action goes to the bottom and it's not just the lead on the top, mm -hmm. then the people that have already purchased from you or the people that have connected, they stay that much more connected because you've given them a reason to. In turn, they are a greater referral because you're not asking them to, but because of the experience that they've had with your music, your product, your service, they're authentically connected. I mean, I see, right. I have clients that have 21,000 likes on a post mm -hmm. and not a single sale. And it's all because they're, they're hitting sales or they're buying the likes or the Amazon. This is one thing I can't stand. Amazon bestseller. You spent the 300 to $1,000 to get your book moved up in Amazon. And it's technically that's a lie because you gave it away for free as a download. And it hit a certain moment when all these people download it. Now you've got a bestseller mark. I never called music business, uh, artist guy to success in the music business a bestseller. It was. I have the tracking records to prove it. I've mm -hmm. never used that word anywhere because I wanted to share this was what I wrote about. Stop trying to be, oh, you're a TEDx speaker. Congratulations that you went to TEDx. That's great. Lose that off of your lead because I want to know what you speak about, why you speak about, where you come from. Let's flip our messaging to the authority where you come from. I love radio. I grew, I mean, I, Ross, we never shared this. My father was an AM radio guy in Boston. Oh, wow. I used to be, a, I was an intern at eight years old in WRKO with the little, the little cassettes and logging. Oh, awesome. We had to write them down. It was like commercials. You didn't just press. And I love running around. And then if I was behaving when I was eight, I could be in the studio as long as I was quiet while my father was recording. There's an art to radio that's been forgotten. And if that art is re- ignited into streaming, into podcasts, into the way these radio stations connected with people, I think certain podcasters and streamers might even do better. Yeah. And, and that's getting lost in radio, unfortunately, as big companies basically own just about every station and have realized 
that, you know what, we don't have to invest in eight news departments and eight sports departments <laughs> and eight DJs. We can just run something out of Central and have one news person, one <laughs> sports person, or just take it all off of satellite because we the algorithm has told us these are the songs people want to hear. So that local flavor of that personality, be it a DJ, be it a host, be it the news anchor, being unique and different, I know we're not supposed to use you. <laughs> no, but being, being but, real, you got it. You got but it. being a real person, like you tuned in for the, I remember the people who were on when I, when I listened to the radio in the morning before going to school or what have you growing up. Now it, it's, it's all sort of cookie cutter indistinguishable a lot of times. It is. And it's the voices. I mean, like even you, I mean, I, I love your voice. I, I love your voice. I love Jody's voice. I mean, people that can sit there and this nuance that there is an art to radio. Oh, I have a radio show. I'm a podcast to be completely humble, which I, I stay there. I'm a terrible podcaster. I've got great content, but I'm an awful podcaster. I don't have the tone of you. I don't have the tempo of that guy, Trenton. I don't have the, the, the nuances and the embellishments of Jody. I get a certain message across, but I'm not trying to. Podcasting is not my, my primary focus, so I do what I do. I edit it the way that I edit it, not right. trying to make it perfect. But it's in that humility of knowing what I have. And the same thing, you have something that's much stronger. Other people, it's not to be the perfect thing here, but more so to be the authority and authentically you. So, you know, and then at the same time with media, for everything that you're involved in, mm -hmm. what could you send for? What could any of your, your, your viewers send for? What's a media story? Not to say interview me, but just to begin to open doors, not just a social media uh, boost campaign, but becoming a source and a resource vicariously, indirectly, so that when you have something to put out there, you're going to be the point of contact. Yeah. Um, wow. This is just such great information and such great, it's a great mindset to have. It really changes how you look at messaging and marketing. We've gotten a bunch of comments coming in about the background. So I just want to show that uh, again, that this, uh, put that slide up. Jesse Guthrie is the one who did the background, did not charge me, just want to do, uh, you know, contribute something to the show. And he's at streamsensemedia.com. He's putting together packages for StreamYard users. So uh, that all the credit goes to him. I could not have designed anything like this, to be totally honest with you. You see my show cards. I do the best I can, but I try and keep it simple. Um, Lauren, you, you're so generous in, in offering to give away a one hour, uh, big picture, 30 foot, 30,000 foot, uh, view of somebody's messaging. Talk about what that involves. And, uh, then we can go ahead. If anybody's interested in, in spending that hour with Lauren, go ahead and tell us in the chat and I'll go after the show and look back how you would take advantage of it, what you're trying to do. And, uh, Particularly if, you know, you're struggling right now and may not have the, the funds to pay for it, we'd especially like to help somebody out in that way. But, but let us know in the chat how you would take advantage of it, what issues you're having or what you're trying to accomplish. Tell, tell us about what an, an hour uh, consult would be. Well, what I'm, what I would do or what I'll do is I'll look at the examples of what you send me. I'll first send you an email, get a sense of what you have on the web, what you have for videos, what you're trying to create, what problems have been in your way. And right. then in our conversation, it's really compressed, but we'll go over. Here's some key factors that inside of the intention that's true to your heart, the love that you have for what you're creating, what you've done. Here's the perception. Sometimes our coaches you know, forgive them for they know not what they do. They're working off of old information and you may be working off of that information that doesn't, that isn't good for you, or it's off of a certification that doesn't work. So what we'll look at is we'll just, we'll look at a lot that is perception. We'll look objectively at compliance. The, the key things I look at are the subjective and the objective elements. We look at the visuals, the branding aspects of, oh, am I familiar if I'm coming across you? We look at the protective elements. Where it, where are you? Is that name protected? Is that a safe name to have? Is it maybe time to alter your name or alter a product name? Or if it gets much bigger, is that going to bite you in the backside down the line? Right. Then going a little bit further, 
We look at we we look at the, the I mean, we, I'm sorry I already said it the intention and perception. But then I, the I more, probably the, messed you up playing around with this <laughs> these new layers. I'm, like, oh, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna make Lauren big and have him right above where the uh, where his website is. Well, it it, it it was about a three stop process to get there. So <laughs> uh, sorry if I messed you up on no, that. No, no, it's, it's totally cool. <laughs> it, 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 and then it's just the mobilization of what you're doing, how you're taking your time, and looking at things backwards where do you want to be i mean because the, the funniest part is most people 10x would be an awful experience mm -hmm. wouldn't be bad in the wallet but how many companies or businesses or people do you know that if they 10 times or 100 times what they had <laughs> they wouldn't be able to serve you i couldn't 10x my business i would suck for all the fsg clients if we 10x our business right. could we bring it up can we build out longer term can we build endurance that can be better when we begin to look at and it's a it, it's a very fast track of it the who what when where why and how the subjective to the objective the intention and the perception and then just the authenticity and then the hearsay mm -hmm. then it can redirect you and you can make choices for yourself on the best path that is for you, not for somebody else. Because right now, too many people are following the templates that have nothing to do with them. It's a quick hour, but I think it's something that's helpful. I've given it away on other shows, and I see people that they feel that it gets them seen with a different set of eyes that allows them to use their eyes, mobilize and strategize a better route forward for them, not for anybody else. Uh, Kathy says, Kathy Mullen says, Lauren Weissman is definitely worth the experience in working with him. That is a very nice uh, testimonial. Uh, Dean Reynolds, media. Dean Reynolds, our friend, is a uh, musician himself. Glad hey, to Dean. see that he's here with us. Uh, Jody Krangle, of course, who you mentioned. And uh, thanks to everybody watching on YouTube and on Facebook and on Periscope, Twitter as well. Lauren, um, I know you are so generous. You said, you know, I'm not here to promote anything, whatever, but check out his website. There are a lot of good resources. Lauren Weisman, W E I S M A N dot com. Find them at Lauren Weisman throughout social media and check out his podcast. It's a lot of fun. What, what's the name of that podcast? You got a little jingle for? <laughs> I believe that's Wait What Really Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever sing back in the day? Terribly. Uh, I can't <laughs> sing either. <laughs> I was safer behind the drums, and my daughter got it for me. My daughter can. She's a beautiful little girl, but she can't carry a tune. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for joining us, Lauren. It, it's been so great chatting with you. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Ross. <laughs> Check him out again, Lauren Weissman, W-E-I-S-M-A-N, brand messaging strategist. There's so many brand marketing, this and that. He is a brand messaging strategist, believes messaging comes before the marketing. Developing your messaging comes before you go with the marketing. Lauren Weissman, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you, everybody. Uh, it's that time of the show where we do the remix, and that's where we get to some video clips uh, that maybe appeared on social media or just that we didn't get to earlier in the show. And um, I was playing around with a new app, a new video app called Answers RN, AnswersRN.com with the hope of perhaps in the future being able to bring in some audience questions and answers from this app and share them in StreamYard Connect. Uh, basically, it starts by you record a video, and then somebody sends you back a response from the link. I'll show you kind of, here's my video, and then uh, what the responses were. All right, making my first video with Answers RN, with StreamYard Connect adding YouTube as a destination. I wanted to ask you guys, what is your favorite social platform to watch live videos on? Let me know. Uh, DM me if you'd like to respond. I'll send you a link to record a short video, and perhaps we'll play it on StreamYard Connect tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern, on YouTube Live. Hey, Ross. It's Sue Ann. I thought I would answer your question and let you know that my favorite place to watch live videos is probably YouTube. 
Although I've noticed that I've been watching a lot of live streaming video shows lately via Facebook. So, hmm, maybe YouTube for, li for videos, maybe Facebook for live streaming videos? I don't know. Hope that helps. Take care, Ross. Thanks, Sue Ann. Sue Ann recently started live streaming. She's been a, a podcaster, but she's going live much more now with StreamYard. Good to see. You. Thank you for taking a minute. Then I got another answer who from somebody I wasn't expecting. It was the founder of the app. Hey, this is great. I love Answer to RN. Uh, it's my app. It's funny. Um, there are a lot of great places for a live video. Uh, everybody does a very good job with this. Twitter maybe doesn't get enough credit for doing live sports and things like that really well. TikTok has live. Everybody has live. Um, Twitch, though, seems to be the, you know, the giant, the leader. I mean, all they do is live. They're pretty fantastic. And I'll be checking out StreamYard. Thanks. So I ended up having a great conversation with Brian and learning about Answers RN, telling him about how I think I might be able to use it with StreamYard in order to bring on, you know, viewer answers to questions and play more clips because clearly I don't have enough clips with the, uh, what do I have here, like 10 clips loaded up or something. But basically, uh, I, I think that this is kind of a cool app. So Brian's going to be our guest. Brian Alvey, the founder of AnswersRN.com, will be our guest in a couple weeks. Next week, we have a great guest, too. Uh, we're going to talk about NDI with the senior product lead, a senior product manager at Microsoft for Microsoft Teams as they are bringing in NDI to be a part of their live streaming setup. Basically, you can use NDI to send out the video from Teams to another platform. We're going to find out what's going on with that technology. NDI is powerful because we have HDMI, we have SDI. NDI doesn't require a cord, uh, but I'll let the the expert described it probably much better than that. Last week, it was awesome talking with Kim Reynolds, author of the Content Creators Planner, about how she built her online business over the years. And uh, you can never get too much of Kim. We wanted people to think through their content. I like Gary Vee, but the answer is not always more content. So to have a strategy and say, I'm creating this because it, we start with, here are my business goals. Here's the content I can create to support it. What's the call to action so I can create that relationship with a potential subscriber or customer? And then what am I going to offer them for sale? Like every, it, it's that simple. Everything has to come back to that place. And here at my heart, like my everything is content. Sometimes I create content because I feel a need to share and or, or I'm inspired by something or I've learned something invaluable. So like, I don't necessarily think that everything has to be, you know, this, this diehard SEO strategy and whatever, right. all of this comes into play. There's tons of different types of content. And I really believe that you're going to succeed at the content you enjoy doing the most, but you have to do it. But we wanted to give people a framework so that they were like, oh, my content should be delivering sales. Right. The end goal of our content is traffic leads and sales. And if you missed the beginning of the show, uh, we talked about how you can now change layouts in StreamYard so that your guests can be in the big window and you can be in the smaller window. And here's a quick, quick <laughs> piece from the StreamYard Town Hall from the other day. It works in all the different layouts. So uh, whether you're on split screen or you have the bigger, bigger box uh, layout, they'll all work that ceo gage van on top you can see my comment there about how nicely the change works how nicely it switches layouts when you do it correctly <laughs> yes i'm starting to get used to it uh let's do a quick lightning round i'm going to take a look at the chat there are a lot of questions coming in about Streamyard, uh and let me see if i can get to a few of them uh before we have to take off uh there's a question from osborne how uh wow how do we get the background going on Streamyard? so you can upload backgrounds to Streamyard. if you go into the brand tab 
there's an area called backgrounds. You upload something that's uh, essentially 16 by 9. It would be uh, 1920 by 1080 or, uh, yeah, 1920 by 1080, I believe, is, but it's 16 by 9, like a typical PowerPoint widescreen slide. Uh, and you upload that as your image, and uh, that sits as a background. You can also use overlays that, uh, you know, if you use a transparency, that fill up different parts of the screen but leave the video window open. Uh, Sylvia asks, can I green screen with StreamYard? You absolutely can. I'm actually using a green screen right now. I'm using the Elgato green screen. There were questions about what green screen I'm using. I'm using the Elgato green screen. It's actually very easy. I believe it's available even on the free plan. It's definitely on the pro and basic plans, but I believe it's available on the free plan. You can try it out. You just need a green screen. And once you get that physical green screen, it's very easy. There's uh, really not much you have to do but upload your background image. Make sure you don't wear green if you're using a green screen, and you're pretty much good to go. There's just one slider that you can use to sharpen the, the image, but otherwise uh, StreamYard really does it all for you. Nothing to download, uh, nothing to uh, really have to do. As far as that goes, you just need that green screen. Um, let me see if we have other questions. That uh, Somebody says, how can I sh screen share on mobile devices? WWE and Furby says, how can I screen share on mobile devices in StreamYard? Now, right now, screen share is not available on mobile devices. I believe it's the only major feature that's not available on mobile devices. The way that... I get around that is by taking my slides and uploading them one by one as overlays in the order that I want to use them. So instead of using the screen share, which would be, you know, which would look something like this, I just overlay, I just use a, uh, an overlay like this. And then I come back to, to talking on screen. So that's really the difference, but you can load up all your slides as overlays and that's an effective uh, way to go about doing that. Uh, let's see what other questions we have. Um, what green screen format do you use? Uh, says the music T. What I use is whatever stream yard technology is there, um, in terms of the physical green screen, it's more up and down than it is wide. I, do, I don't know the exact measurements, uh, but it's uh, it's a really, uh, I love it. It's the Elgato green screen. They, I think they only make one, uh, or this one is just called the Elgato green screen. So you can take a look. Uh, but there's other ones that go wide. There's ones that attach to your chair. You have to figure out what's, what's the best one for you uh use common sense tv channel says you're the best host thank you so much uh let's see what else uh i don't know if uh, uk 2ak is still here but ask what do they call a guy who hangs out with musicians and uh i assume it's a joke i assume it's a good one uh, uh hopefully it's clean if you want to throw that in the chat if you're still here that would be a lot of fun. Uh, just checking through uh, to see other questions. Uh, Jessica Kim asks, quick question. Does StreamYard support a private streaming for a ticketed event? Yes and no. Okay, there's no built-in right now purchasing. But... I believe with Facebook, now Facebook Live events, you can use StreamYard to connect. You might need to do it by RTMP, or you might be able to do it with the built-in integration to Facebook. But you can set up an event through a Facebook page and charge for that event based on Facebook's new events program that they have you just have to check it out do you have access is it available yet 
I haven't tried it yet, but you can set your price and people just use Facebook pay to, to click the button and then they can get access to your event. So thank you for that question. Uh, let's see what else we have. It looks like I think I got to most of the questions. If not, uh, let's see. We got one here. Tech top. A tech top? A tech two. Uh, a tech two. Sorry about that. Seems interesting. Now, who provided the drums for the intro? Uh, that was just some royalty-free music. The, uh, the intros, uh, I'm not sure which one you, you're referring to, but there were three different pieces of music. One was... Uh, when I just had the banner up before I came on, one was the countdown and another one was the, uh, kind of the open, right? So all three of those are royalty free music. A couple of them came from the sites where I made those videos. One was from place it, one was from in video and the other, I think was from YouTube's just free stock music, whatever you call it, the royalty free music library so uh looking to see if uh no i guess there's no answer to that question i really i'm waiting for the punchline the uk 2ak's question uh wwe and furby i just answered your question about how you can screen share on mobile devices in Streamyard again you don't screen, screen share from a mobile device. You would upload your slides as overlays and do it that way. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Don't forget, we've got a lot of shows uh, that, are, that are available on StreamYard, and more are coming along. We've got Dana Bentz and Kelsey Bentz tomorrow night, Thursday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, StreamYard Spotlight where they talk to StreamYard users about how they're using the uh, product, how they're using StreamYard uh, in their business or to build their brand or to showcase their abilities. And then Sunday night, it's the town hall. The co-founders, Gage Vandentop and Dan Briggs, take your questions. You can find that across social media, Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, and LinkedIn. And then come back and join us again next week, to, uh, Wednesday. Yeah, I know when my own show is. Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern StreamYard Connect on Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope. And again, don't forget to catch Dana and Kelsey tomorrow night in the StreamYard Spotlight on the StreamYard Facebook page. And UK 2AK is back. He says, I'm here. A person who hangs out with musicians is called a drummer. That is, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, it's sort of funny, but uh, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Um, Moss B. Jab says, hello, while broadcasting in eight destinations, will the views reflect in your main platform? The main platform tell us, tells me how many people are watching based on where uh, they get that information from. So uh, I'm able to see how many people are watching. But if I mouse over the little eye in the upper right corner, upper left corner of my studio monitor window it will show me how many live viewers are watching on youtube how many how many are watching on facebook and how many are watching on periscope uh if you are going to multiple for example multiple facebook destinations directly from Streamyard, rather than going to one destination and then sharing it to others those views will not aggregate so they'll be separate uh view numbers so Thanks for being here. Also, to say a quick hello to Sue Ann. We played your video a little bit earlier. Glad you made it. Uh, and those are the shows. Don't forget to come back and join us next week and every week, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter slash Periscope. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day.